My name is Benjamin Ruick. I am 36 years old and I'm a professional climber. Climbing to me is, how do you put it? I mean, it's like all, all arts and sports and everything all combined into one because you have to have a vision and you have to have like a very complex set of goals that you're gonna like work towards and you have to have a reason to do it. I can actually become more of like my myself that I want to be in like my regular life because I have this outlet. There's no question that this is an acute injury. The idea of a career coming to a close, I mean that was just like devastating. Like am I gonna not be able to bounce back from this? Climbing in general since the age of 18 to now has just been the main driver for everything that I do. Like, I've never known what it's like to, to pursue anything else. And, you know, that's a huge insecurity on my own part. Like, just not really knowing, um, like, what I am without this. You know, in the beginning it used to be just, you know, throwing my myself at a wall. If I kept hanging my head against a root, I would probably get it eventually or, or break myself. And I've had a lot of success like working in chaos, you know, the whole definition of chaos is like you keep doing the same thing over and over and over, expecting a different result and it's kind of like, well, but success is that way too. You just keep doing things, the same thing over and over and over and expecting the same result, which is success. I'm gonna keep trying this route over and over and over again until I get the result of winning. Or I break, I don't know which. I got an MRI a little bit ago that said that I tore like a quarter of my labrum. So right now I am heading into Vail hopefully uh, get a surgical date figured out to like get this thing fixed so I can get back to climbing. Tell me a little bit more about when, when it happened, first of all. Um, so I was on a boulder problem. I was up here like this, on okay. uh, slightly over from something that immediately made me drop off the wall. Yeah. Because I'm like, is this a career ender? Like, what did I do? I've never yeah. felt this before. Um, can I check it out? Yes, sir. Don't let me go out this way. I want you to use this way. Good. Does that one give you any trouble at all? Really? Oh, that's weak. There's no question that this is an acute injury. I mean, it kind of seems like this is something that should probably be tacked down and repaired. I'm in. Okay, see you. See you soon back here. Yeah, okay. absolutely. All right. There's just so many variables that are out of my control. Like, if somebody would turn around tomorrow and be like, dude, you're gonna come back, and you're gonna come back between like 95 to 100%, like guaranteed, no problems, like I wouldn't even be sweating it. My actual fear is that like this injury will rob me of like my dreams. The reason that this injury is like so much of a timestamp for me is because it's the very first one I've ever really had. The idea of a career coming to a close you know, after 20 years of just like pure focus and dedication, I, I mean, that was just like devastating. I mean, honestly, like it was so bad for me that I thought that, you know, people were gonna not be my friends anymore because I wasn't a pro climber or that my wife was gonna divorce me because she's only ever known me as a pro climber. The anxiety is the worst. Just the, the not knowing, the fear, like am I gonna like not be able to bounce back from this? Is my body fundamentally gonna change? Am I gonna be completely incapable of stepping back into the confidence of who I was? I mean, I've always known that at some point this does have to move on. And what that looks like, I wasn't quite sure. Or, and I don't, I don't really know even to this point what that looks like, but you know, you always kind of hope that you have a little bit of control as to like how you exit a building instead of just kind of feeling like you got thrown out.
Yeah. Hello, how are you? I'm good, I'm here. Yeah. Just good. Yeah. Looking um, good? Yeah, yeah. Feeling good. Yeah. Apparently. You feeling good? They told me you were doing great on the phone, so. Oh really? Hmm? Oh that's that's good to hear. Yeah, they called they're like, he's doing great. Come get him. The thing that probably made this whole experience a lot easier was just having a support structure. I have an incredibly kind wife who she was there. She just made sure that I was okay. It, the support, of course, but the support and the confidence that I was going to get through it, even if even if I couldn't see it. Right. Yeah, day one, um, I was doing okay, and I was trying to avoid taking like the oxycotton stuff, and then very quickly went from like, oh, you know, like manageable pain to like completely intolerable. No matter what was gonna happen, shit was gonna hurt. First off, I didn't want to let the pain win because I didn't want to have to like rely on like a ton of medication. Opioids like scare the crap out of me. <laughs> the other one was I didn't want the pain to win for me not to do my physical therapy correctly. I didn't want to get to the point where I went, oh, it hurts and I won't do it because that doesn't get me where I want to go. I didn't want to lose my mobility in my arm because I refused to stretch. I didn't want to lose the capability in my bicep because I refused to like lift anything. I don't really take that for granted being able to do this. That took a lot of concentration. There, it's just, it's so simple, but it's just so hard. That took like a ridiculous amount of concentration to even like, let my body think that it's okay to do that. It's like, I'm looking forward to the next, the next Oxycontin. <laughs> you know, if you're going to get better, if you're going to be able to do anything um, after these major surgeries or I mean, even if you're like hoping at all to recover, like physical therapy is the most important aspect of it. Like how are you gonna be able to learn how to move again when your tendons have been rerouted in your body? I mean, it's, it's, it's like the most fundamental part. And it's the hardest part because it's the thing that is routine and it's the thing that hurts and it's the thing that sucks, but it's like, honestly, the only way out is through it. So while, while I do think intrinsically like climbing can be inherently selfish, there are like really amazing things that generally can happen um, that are selfless. Nice. We go spot each other on projects for somebody else or you know sit on the rope for hours while somebody works on something. I mean, there's a lot of give and take in the climbing community and I think that like overall it's an amazing community. <laughs> This whole experience has like taught me something really interesting, which is like the narrative has to change. I don't need to feel proud anymore about my climbing. I mean, I've had so many different expectations thrown at me from somebody else that like that is partly why I ended up even having a shoulder surgery. It's because I felt like I needed to be able to do this problem. So instead of accepting the fact that like I was having a hard time on it and letting go and like letting it go and being okay with that, I pushed it to injury. I think every professional athlete at some point has to reframe and change the narrative. Trying to solve a new problem with old thinking, you're just gonna have the old problem again, which is injury loss of identity, like, and just like setbacks that don't make sense. We're getting there. <laughs> it's hard to go from climbing like double digit boulder problems to being like, yeah, V0 is an accomplishment for today. But it is cool to see like all these big holds and like what to look forward to when I can start actually climbing again.
So uh, have a seat right up here. Again. I just want to test your strength. Okay, go like this. Resist me. Go out like that. Resist me. Up like this. Resist. Push me away. Did that cause any pain anywhere? Uh, nothing about what we see here, even though you have slight changes, uh, should limit you. I mean, I think that you, you can really kind of step back into doing the things that you do you know, for fun and, and professionally. I can go climbing again. There is no going back to like some kind of defining route being like, I'm back, baby. It's, I'm already here. And that was like the biggest understanding that I, I think I screwed up. I wanted to get back to who I was as opposed to working with and cultivating and strengthening what I am becoming. This is what I'm capable of doing in this moment, and I can build on that and hopefully build to a direction that I want to go to. I don't have to climb 14D versus sense to feel satisfied. It's just the act of climbing and the, the act of exploration that's satisfying. I mean, that's the whole point of this.